Interesting piece over at Alternet. Uh, big lie. America doesn't have the number one richest middle class in the world. Oh, really? We used to. Where are we? Well, we're number 27 in the world. 27 in middle class. We are the richest country in the world. We have the most millionaires. We have the most billionaires. We have the most very, very wealthy corporate executives of any other country in the world. And we have the most poor people and the most children in poverty of any developed country in the world. You could say, you know, welcome to third world America. Alabama and Mississippi are starting to look like uh, Guatemala or Somalia. But the fact of the matter is that those states still have their millionaires and billionaires along with this dreadful, dreadful poverty. So what do we do about this? How do we respond to this? Well, Congressman Paul Ryan has been thinking real hard about this, and he's been out in kind of a low-profile way. I remember a couple of years ago, he and his wife showed up in a soup kitchen for a photo op. But uh, he's been visiting nonprofits around the country who are doing good work at the, at the local level. And I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan of the nonprofit sector doing good work. I'm on the board of one, the Hunter School. In fact, the local, the, uh, local TV station in New Hampshire just did a really nice piece, uh, which I think Lori's probably going to put up on the website over at hunterschool.org in the next couple of days uh, with, with a link to it. Uh, and Lisa Ling for the Oprah Network did a really nice piece, too, on, on the work that Hunter School is doing, and it's a private organization. But that doesn't mean that private organizations should take over government functions. You know, if the government is failing to meet a particular need or is unable to meet a particular need, I don't have a problem with private organizations stepping in. But what Paul Ryan has come up with is let's take all these federal programs that are helping out people in need and turn them into block grants and give the money to the states and tell the states two things. One, A, you can do this any way you want, and B, you have to use as many private contractors as possible. And since a lot of the organizations, I mean, Hunter School is not religiously affiliated, uh, although the, you know, we are the original model for the Salem Children's Village in, in New Hampshire, which the Hunter School is, you know, they're, they're one and the same. When we first started it back 30-some-odd years ago, when Louise and I first started it, it was a community for abused kids because there was that, that was the crisis in New Hampshire at the time. There were, there were not enough foster homes. The foster homes that there were there were not able to deal with the really, really damaged kids or the really violent kids. And the, the state basically only had two options for those kind of kids, the state mental hospital or the state children's prison. So we created an a intermediary you know, place where kids could live in a, in, a, in a family environment. Over the years, it's become, you know, the school part of it has become the, the, the front and center part. But, but, and and the, the organization in Germany that we based it on calls themselves a Christian organization. And, yeah, I think in our founding document and in our incorporation papers we note that, but we are not a religious organization in any way. Our 501c3 exemption comes from being a school. But this, this uh, pitch of Paul Ryan's is going to just open the door, open the floodgates for money to go to church-based organizations. And, and frankly, I mean, the, the, the corruption... Of, of these processes. He says, uh, this is, he says, it, it's, it's going to actually help poor people. I don't think so. I think what he's doing is he's, he's extending the Republican criminalization of poverty. He's, he sa he's saying you must be working, first of all, to be eligible for this stuff. Well, a lot of people who are on these welfare programs are either elderly, children, or disabled people. In fact, more than half. So you got to be working. All right. And then, okay, you got to be working, at, but all our jobs are in, like, Vietnam. You got a solution for that? No, Paul Ryan believes in free trade. So if you're not, we're going to punish you. It's just, it's... It, as I, I, I think that, you know, Thomas Ricks and others, as we see the, the ugly face of the Republican Party, 
the stupidity and hatred, people are just turning away from it.